Hey there guys, today I'm going to be starting a new franchise called the Cap Challenge. So I will quickly go over what the rules that I am going to be using for it are and then we can dive right in. So first of all, the obvious one is there is a cap on how good a player can be. Oops, and I have that as three stars overall. If a player passes three stars overall by my head scout, then he must be automatically retired. I may have one reliever with absolutely no limit, so in other words, I am allowed to have a closer, and up to five other players exceeding 3.5 stars at a time, and then that's it. If I have any more than that, then they have to be retired. And uh, obviously building a bullpen outside of my closer is going to be really tough with the three star limit. So every time a player is forced retired because they exceeded the limit, I get to create a new player exactly 18 years of age so he will be born on the day that uh, I retire the player 18 years old and he will have overall ratings or in his potential ratings will be exactly equal to that player's overall and um, his overall ratings will be 10% of that player's overall rating so 10% of their potential uh, owner goals will be disabled because it will be nearly impossible or completely impossible to complete them I will be taking a $5 million trade fee, so every time I complete a trade, I will have to remove $5 from my balance. Um, my player development and scouting budgets may only be half of their maximum amount, which is really going to make it difficult to develop my high-end players. I may only spend half of my international amateur free agent cap, and I may only spend half of my suggested draft budget. So in other words, I have some pretty tight constraints here, oh, and I don't know if I uh, said the $50 million payroll, but... I am not going to be able to have a payroll over $50 million or I'll have to trade away players. So I will be doing this franchise with the Seattle Mariners as I think they're a pretty good team to start it with. They got a whole bunch of half decent mediocre players and um, some decent prospects who can quickly develop into the type of player that we are looking for, such as, you know, Evan White and, uh, others so hopefully we can get some good budget players and make this franchise successful so as for immediately rebuilding this team obviously the number one player i target when i start up a franchise is evan white i don't need to do that here so let me check his outfield ratings he will likely be my left fielder so Evan White's going to be the long-term left fielder. He's on a very friendly contract. He is never going to be higher than three and a half stars, I hope. So hopefully we can uh, get some nice things going with him. We're going to have to rely on some of our lesser players, which make up the entire team, in order to succeed. So for this season, Taylor Gilbu is going to be my uh, five-star or no-limit reliever. And Austin Nola is currently the only player who fits under the three and a half star category. And I think I'm probably going to trade him away. So now we're going to be looking at potential trade options and uh, try to figure out what it is that we could get for this franchise to make it better. So somebody I'm probably going to trade is Kyle Seeger. As you can see, my payroll is already significantly above $50 million. Uh, D. Strange Gordon. It's a significant part of that. His option will be declined, so he's not going to hike up the payroll. Brian Shaw, also a significant part of that. Uh, Hanniger is likely going to get traded. I don't really want to have him around if he's going to be this expensive and not even good. So we got a whole bunch of guys who are likely to be traded. We're going to need to really budget with our relief pitching in particular. Um, our position players, we're going to have to find some cheap ones. I've already got a couple guys in mind, so I'm going to hop right into it and make a trade with the New York Mets for Luis Guillorme, if I can find him. There he is. Okay, perfect. So Guillorme is the exact kind of player you want for a challenge like this. He's got very high defense. He can play shortstop very, very well, and he's got a good on-base profile, which will make him... Uh, pretty valuable near the top of the lineup. He's also very controllable and he's got a good personality which makes him also more valuable. So let's see what it'll take to get him. So Shed Long Jr., Tom Murphy, or Daniel Vogelbach since I'm probably not going to need Vogelbach. I mean he's a designated hitter really. He's not a 
good defender by any stretch of the imagination. I'll probably get someone else to play first base, like uh, your Christian Walkers or something of the world. So, I don't know, we'll figure it out. But, um, yeah, anyways, let's see if they have anyone else we could be interested in. Edwin Diaz is a really good five-star closer who I would love to have long-term, so might as well just ask about him. So he's affordable, but I don't really want to give any... Oh, wait, Hanniger, but I could use Hanniger to get other things. So for now, obviously, I gotta be very, very uh, stingy with the players that I get. Jeff McNeil might be a good option. Yeah, I don't think we really have a second baseman, and Jeff McNeil can very affordably play second base. He's only got one year of service time, or at least I think he's only got one year of service time. Uh, he would fit very nicely into our team. Where is he? Here he is. Okay. And he's not going to be affordable. Let's see if they've got any... Oh, wait, that's right. They've got Robinson Cano. Maybe we should bring him back to the Mariners. He's expensive, of course, but, uh, yeah, he's expensive. All right, Andres Jimenez is always interesting. I might be looking at him. He could potentially uh, be a shortstop long-term as well. Ronnie Mauricio I will look into as well. Yeah, he could be a shortstop. He's got leadership as well. Okay, how good is Shed Long Jr.? Definitely not that good. I'm not going to trade him right now, though, but I will keep in mind that I could get these prospects from the Mets if I were willing to trade him. Alright, and remember that there is a $5 million trade fee every time I complete a trade, so now I need to get money out of here in order to break even. Let's aim for at least $5 million. So I can throw in a player who's not super valuable to complete this trade, and that's pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. So Matt McGill is a decent reliever, but he gets by because he's got a deep arsenal, which is not really your ideal relief pitcher. He's affordable, but he's not really going to be super productive in the bullpen. I would rather give somebody else up, though. Most of these guys are looking like they're going to be at least half decent, which is not ideal. Uh, Hirano gets expensive, and he doesn't look like he's super talented either, so I wouldn't really have a problem trading him. Alright, now let's see if we can get a little bit more cash here. Alright, perfect. So we're going to make at least a little bit of money off of this trade. And I will now go and take $5 million out of our account. Alright, so there's the $5 million trade fee. Okay, let's see if we can't find any other uh, good budget players. J.B. Bukowskis might be a good one. I'll ask about him. Oh, wait. Where'd he go? Here he is. So he's not going to be too expensive either. I'm not going to pull the trigger on a trade here yet, but I will keep him in mind. Let's take a look at Corbin Carroll as well. I mean, not Corbin Carroll, Corbin Martin. Uh, injured list, injured list. Okay, Corbin Martin. So he is a pretty well-rounded pitcher. He's only got two and a half star potential, so he's almost certainly not going to hurt our cap. And he could definitely be a middle to front of the rotation starter. All right, so they're looking for this Donovan Walton guy, who I think has... I mean, he's a captain, but he has basically no value to this organization in terms of being able to produce, so I'm not going to have any issues trading him away. Uh, 
do they have anybody else interesting? Carson Kelly's a really nice defensive catcher, but I'm not sure that he's worth acquiring because he usually is really pricey in trade. Yeah, we can't even get him. Luke Weaver might not be a bad pickup, but I'm not the biggest fan of his profile. Josh Green could be interesting, at least as a reliever. He's a ground baller. He's got half... He, yeah, he could be an interesting reliever. I'll ask about him. If he's not expensive, then I don't really have a problem trading for him here. Okay, who is this guy? Williamson. Brandon Williamson. Eh, I don't know. I'm not sure about this. I mean, this right here is a good trade by itself. Archie Bradley could be a nice reliever. He's only three stars overall. All right, let's check into J.B. Bukaskis again. Or maybe Seth Beer. Seth Beer is a pretty decent budget power hitter. He could slot into the outfield, maybe first base. What are his infield ratings? Yeah, he's not a terrible first baseman. He's six foot three. I mean, I'll ask about him. Alec Thomas should be another potential pickup because he is. Uh, he turns out pretty well center field. I don't hate this guy, but I, I don't really want to trade him away. Normally, I would be jumping for joy that they're asking for these old relievers, but again, this is a completely different game here. Yeah, that guy is just never going to succeed. Okay, Corbin Carroll. Oh, this is a pretty well-rounded version of Corbin Carroll. All right, I'll keep him the top of my head. This Alec Thomas looks pretty nice. I think I'd rather have the Corbin Carroll, though. Okay, Tom Murphy. I could give up Tom Murphy. I could also give up Shed Long. I'm not... I don't really want to do that just yet. Let's ask about Thomas now. He's even more expensive. I will keep this in mind. And I'm not going to pull the trigger on this trade yet because I would, again, there's the trade fee, so I want to get as much done in a single trade as possible. Pache is a very nice center fielder. Really high defense. He's an above average hitter. Uh, he's only three and a half star potential, so he could slot in. I'll at least ask about him. Right, how about Drew Waters? Michael Harris. I've never even heard of this guy. Alright, well, I'll at least ask about Michael Harris here. Okay, he's a potential pickup. I'm not going to pull the trigger right now. William Contreras might be a good trade option as well. He could be uh, backup catcher and then starting catcher in a year. Ooh, but they want Logan Gilbert. Not going to do that yet. Max Fried looks fairly affordable. Ooh, Tyler Flowers has really good defense. Perfect. That's is exactly what you're looking for in a starting catcher in a budget team. This is not what you're looking for in the price to pay for it, though. So I am not going to make this trade just yet, but I I could make it eventually. Duran Ciarte, he's a pretty nice all-around player. Let's see if he costs too much. Again, not really my ideal trade, but I will potentially come back to the Braves on this. I know that the... Uh, the, the Orioles have some interesting budget prospect pieces. Rushman is not a pro budget piece, of course, but uh, Yusniel Diaz is not bad. Grayson Rodriguez is not bad. I'll actually ask about Rodriguez. 
Bannon's not bad. Gunnar Henderson is not bad by any means. I might be asking about him in a minute. Mountcastle is a good pickup. He could be a first baseman long term. Let's see here. So Mountcastle is a good contact hitter with some pretty good first base defense. What does OSA think of him? They think he's a little bit better than my head scout, so I'm going to probably trust OSA on that. Ooh, I don't really want to give this dude up. He's got good control, and he's an extreme ground baller. But I mean, Ryan Mountcastle is pretty much a must-have. Jose Iglesias, he could be a shortstop for us. It's his contract. Like, his contract is affordable. Yeah, but his uh, cost and trade is surprisingly not. Um, let's see here. I don't really love any of these guys too much. Yeah, I think we're just going to go for Mount Castle. Maybe Tanner Scott, too. Yeah, this is a direct upgrade in our relief pitching core. We give up one of those guys. So let's see here. Is Brennan or Altavia? I like Brennan, so let's not quite move him yet. Altavia throws hard, but he's got to be the choice here because Mount Castle is just essentially a better version of him. What about Anthony Santander? Okay, Santander could be a right fielder. Or maybe he couldn't be. All right, now we need to look for money here. All right, well, we're not getting much money out of this, so we are going to lose money on this trade. Hopefully, um, we can get more money out of other trades because obviously we can't just uh, lose all our cash. Okay, the Red Sox, do they have any interesting budget pieces? Uh, I don't really like Benintendi, actually. Eduardo Rodriguez, Colin McHugh. Doesn't look like they have any uh, MLB pieces. Do they maybe have some prospects? Jeer Downs usually comes cheaper than he's worth. I mean, at worst, we could just flip him later. Carl Edwards Jr. He's a good stuff pitcher, but he's not uh, more valuable than Downs for sure. All right, where is Huak? Here's Huak. I'll ask for him. All right, this doesn't look too bad, I hope. Ooh, Kyle Seeger. They would be willing to take him off our hands. Problem is, I don't know if we've got another third baseman, but we can pick one up. Is Bobby Dowback capable of playing third base? He is capable of playing third base. He just strikes out too much, but he is technically capable. Who do they have on their roster who's not Raphael Devers that can play third base? 
Yairo Munoz. Yeah, not with that personality. I don't know if it's worth giving up Seeger for Huak. Silent stud ask for cash. And after this, I'm going to have to take 10 million out of our cash total for the last two trades I've made. We're going to have negative cash here now. Yep, we have negative cash now, so we are not looking at a very pretty situation. And we still got trades to make. So why don't we make our next trade with the New York Yankees and try to get some cash out of them. Uh-huh. Okay, James Paxton, no. Miguel Andujar, this could be our third baseman. Andujar is not terrible. He's definitely a solid hitter. Shed Long Jr. to complete the trade. But, I mean, I have a feeling he can get us better things than Andujar. Okay, how about Gio Urshela? Yes, he is a leader. He's a decent defender. He can hit... Ah. How about Luke Voigt to play first base for us? Yeah, he could play first base conceivably. How about Debbie Garcia? Ooh, or Kevin Alcantara, or both. Alright, well Kevin Alcantara is a possibility. Devi Garcia is also a possibility. I'll come back to you, Yankees. How about the Dodgers? Dodgers, Dustin May, here we go, Dustin May could be a nice addition. Could have sworn Michael Bush was more developed than that. Edwin Rios, could he play first base? I don't like that avoid case, but he hypothetically could. Justin Turner could play third for us. He's not too bad. Oh, you know what? He's only got one year left on his contract anyway. I still haven't actually traded Kyle Seeger. How about the Angels? Ooh, Andrelton Simmons with 85 shortstop defense. That's definitely tempting. Doesn't look like they have anyone super interesting, though, so I'll take a look at the prospect options. The ones who aren't Joe Adele. Don't love Jeremiah Jackson. No, you know what? The Angels aren't going to be an option. The Phillies have money. And they've got Alec Bohm. 
who would be perfect fit for first base. You know, I would be willing to give up Haniger here for Bohm. All right, what else can we get out of this? What if we got Reese Hoskins to play first and move Bohm to third? He's about to hit arbitration, though. I guess I could at least ask. I mean, I could. I would have to give up both of my super valuable trade chips to get it done, though. Well, I don't know here. I don't know. I mean, I would do this to get Bohm. But I don't know what else I could get out of this. I mean, I guess we should just ask for cash now. As much as we can possibly get here. Oops. Sucks that the uh, Mariners have so few valuable pieces at the start of their franchise. I mean, I don't even have trade pieces that I could use without making this organization sting, which sucks because obvious things. Oh yeah, Kyle Lewis. We can have him play the outfield this year. J.P. Crawford. Oh, he's actually not a half-bad shortstop. I don't want to give him up. Brandon Brennan, who's the extreme ground baller. I would need either more cash or Sir Anthony Domingos, though. The Mariners so suck so much that even their sucky pieces are valuable to them. By comparison, Brandon Williamson, once again, getting asked for in trade. Okay, what if I cut this a million? Who's this Newsome guy? I think he's been asked for as well. Is he in my proposed Diamondbacks trade? Yeah, he was. Okay, I'm not moving him to the Phillies. I will need him to complete that trade. And I'm going to complete that trade one way or another. Okay, Fraley. What's his deal? He's a good defensive left fielder, but I mean... He's not going to fit in, considering I'm going to have Evan White and everything. Alright, let's up this back to 7.5 million. How about 7? Will that get it done? 6.5. All right, well, I have to kind of pull the trigger. Uh, 
All right, well, that kind of helped balance our finances a little bit. So I suppose let's look at... Um, Nationals. Do they have anybody that we could use? As Drupal Cabrera could man third, but he's old. I need young, affordable pieces. They seem to be lacking in that area. Is Kurt Suzuki a good defensive catcher? No. Jan Gomez, also no. Garcia could man third base long term. Carter Keyboom could immediately and long term do it as well. So let's see about him. Actually, you know what? What exactly is the deal with Gonzalez? I think he's starting to hit arbitration soon. He's not the best anyway. Oh no, he's on a long term extension that I have absolutely no desire to pay him. I would like Luis Garcia out of this trade though. And maybe some cash. Uh, Trey Turner could play second base, but he's not worth trading, though. Adam Eaton could play right field for a year and then hits free agency. Because there's no way we'd pick up his team option. Starlin Castro, no. Ooh, how about Yadiel Hernandez, no. This is tough. This is much tougher than I thought it would be. Is there anybody I would give up? There does not appear to be. Maybe Matt McGill, I guess. I, w I wouldn't give him up for four million dollars. I'd need more than that. All right, this looks more doable. Who is this Walt guy? Oh, I think he's in the Diamondbacks trade, so I can't move him here either. How about that catcher, though? Bins. Carter Bins. Yeah, he's not too good. I'll do that. Oh dear, okay. Cardinals have money. Do they have anyone we could use though? That's the question. really like Carlson that much. How about Nolan Horman? He's not too bad. Genesis Cabrera? Maybe no. The Twins have some cash. Ooh, Kurloff looks pretty nice. Royce Lewis is almost always a pretty good shortstop. All right, well, I'll ask about Kurloff. All right, well, he looks affordable. I'd definitely be willing to give up. Uh, who's this Kirby, George Kirby? 
I would be willing to give up George Kirby for sure to get him. Miguel Sano is four and a half stars. I was hoping he would maybe be uh, one of the potential cheapo options. Does Alex Avila have good catcher ability? No. Ooh, Luis Arias, and he's shockingly low rated for his ability. I'll ask about him. I could give you Shedlong Jr. for him. Where's Shedlong Jr.? Oh, they're smarter than that. Darn it. Maybe Nelson Cruz could be our DH for the year? No, I don't want any short-term pieces. Maybe I should ask about Kurloff, or I mean Lewis. Yeah, Shedlong Jr. for Royce Lewis isn't bad. I could have sworn the Twins had more money than they do. Who's this Cody Stashik guy? Not good enough is what he is. All right, give me all your money. Oh, maybe I should take out the Shedlong Jr. for Royce Lewis bit, but I really like Royce Lewis. Alright, so at least a 10th round pick. I get a ninth round pick at least. Okay, well I guess I'm gonna have to settle for a tenth round draft pick from the twins. Alright, the next move we need to make has to trade away Kyle Seeger. Because we definitely cannot afford to keep him. And we also need a lot of cash. So who wants Kyle Seeger? Who's got money? The Brewers have money, I think. Devin Williams, by the way, had a great year. Ooh, Drew Rasmussen. What does OSA think of him? I don't think he's quite as ready, but they mostly agree on his ability. Perfect. We can acquire Drew Rasmussen. And they want Kyle Seeger, so there we go. That solves our Kyle Seeger problem. Corbin Burns would be a nice starting pitcher addition, but is he affordable? He is affordable. Corbin Burns is going to join the rotation. Now, who do I want to give up here? Suppose I could give up Tom Murphy. Who would be my backup catcher if I traded him, though? Cal Raleigh. Yeah, he's not too bad. I mean, he's basically Tom Murphy Jr. anyway, so... Lorenzo Cain still got really good defense. Freddy Peralta, no. Could Orlando Arcia be a decent? No, not really. No, this guy's not a bad catcher. Okay, good. This is a very good trade for us.
All right, let's see if they've got any prospects that we could maybe add here. You know what, better yet, let's get cash. Oh, we can't get too much cash here, though. Because Kyle Seeger and Tom Murphy are fairly pricey. Alright, I guess we can ask about draft picks or something. Devin Williams. I mean, he could potentially be a starter, but not really, I guess. I don't know. Well, they'd be willing to throw him in. Which is something. How about Bryce Terang? I don't know, they don't really have many valuable prospects. That's the Brewers for you. I mean, I guess I can add this catcher, maybe? No. Now let's see how much of Freitas' contract the Brewers are willing to retain. And then I will complete this trade. Okay, 30%. All right, time to take five million off our finances, complete that trade with the Diamondbacks, and then I think we should be good to go to start this season. I think five million dollars might have been a little bit excessive on the trade fee though. All right, so we still got Corbin Martin and Seth Beer here. I would like to add one of uh, Christian Rob, I mean, not Christian Robinson, um, Alec Thomas or Corbin Carroll. Oh, well, Say actually likes Thomas even better. Likes Corbin Carroll better too. All right, let's see about Thomas here. Could we throw in Shedlong Jr.? I'll try throwing in Shedlong Jr. Or have I already traded him? I've already traded him. Well, I guess you have to pay for the consequences of not being able to see ahead. Oh, did we already trade that one pitcher? I think we already traded that one pitcher. Could we give them the reliever? Uh, that still doesn't quite get it done. Oh, we have two relievers like this? Austin Adams. All right. Sure. You know, while we're blowing up the team, why not add Corbin Carroll? I'm going to pass on that. Wait, we've got to have somebody. J.P. Crawford, maybe. But he's unfortunately a very affordable piece. Yeah, I think we're just not going to be able to get Carroll in this trade. How about Wildered Patino? No, maybe not him. There's got to be somebody here that we could add. Alvin Guzman, maybe? Ooh, Ryan Nelson could be a potential target. Ooh, Paven Smith. We got to have Paven Smith. Yeah, we got to have Paven Smith. He 
could definitely turn into a pretty good first baseman. And we get Josh Green now. Okay, not for too much more. Braden Bishop, is he actually, like, worth using? Oh, he's not a bad defensive center fielder. I don't want to give him up. Brandon Williamson? Okay, you know, I'd be willing to give him up to get Josh Green. Now let's see how much cash we can squeeze out of this one. All right, can we get them to retain any of Green's contract? Nope, we can't. All right, well, I guess this is what we're going to have to do. So this is basically a massive prospect swap that gets us some pretty good building blocks here. All right, time to take another $5 million out of our finances, and then we should be good to start. All right, now we need to figure out what our roster is going to look like. So Corbin Burns should slot into the starting rotation. Tanner Scott should be a closer or something. Giorme should start. Fritas will be our backup catcher. Josh Green should probably be at least a reliever. Devin Williams should be a reliever, maybe. We've got some interesting pieces at AAA, too. So we need to keep this in mind because um, we could potentially use some of these guys. I'm not sure if we should be bringing up some of our younger pieces and giving them a chance to get some major league experience or hold them down for a year and get another year of control. I'm definitely going to manipulate service time, so that is a guarantee. Does Tanner Scott have a year of service time yet? Yeah, he does. He's got more in the year, I think. Also, can we trade Yusi Kikuchi? He's not terrible, but his contract makes him not desirable. Nope, we can't trade Kikuchi. He, we're stuck with him. All right, well, Corbin Burns will slot into the rotation as our ace. Nobody else is capable of starting. I mean, Josh Green might be a better starter than Taiwan Walker, but I don't know. I mean, we might as well give him at least a chance to start. He's not too bad. Kendall Graveman, yeah, I guess he should start. All right, Fritas will be our backup catcher behind Austin Nola. Is Patrick Wisdom actually worth starting at first base? Very much not so. Okay, we will get Alec Bohm up to start at first base. I think D. Strange Gordon will be starting at second, and Luis Kibarme will be shortstop. Maybe. I'm not sure what we're going to do with J.P. Crawford. I mean, maybe he should be the starting shortstop. He is not bad defensively. Guillaume is a good defensive second baseman as well. But we also need a third baseman. He's got some third base training, but not much. Dylan Moore, he can start at third, maybe? He's probably the worst case scenario, but I mean, I guess... I guess for this year what we can do is still have Evan White start at first base, have Alec Bohm start at third, and then move Evan White into the outfield next year. But obviously we're not calling up any of our top prospects to start the season. So for now, let's just put Giorme there and Strange Gordon there. We also could use a designated hitter. 
Ooh, yeah, don't like that personality. You're released. Sam Haggerty. There's no way anyone at double A is a DH, right? Okay, we don't really have a designated hitter. Let's see if there's any free agents, as weird as this may sound, that we could potentially add to be our designated hitter. We might also sign a reliever or two. Okay, there's this dude. Andrew Applin. He's not a bad defensive outfielder either, and he is not a terrible hitter. Oh, this guy could be worth signing to a minor league contract. Oh, Milky Cabrera is available. He's not a bad DH. All right, well, maybe we can get Milky Cabrera. Wei Yin Chen, he's fun. All right, Brandon Morrow. You are still better than some of our current pitchers, so I will offer you a major league contract. However, if we get one up even one time, I'm not going to sign him. Ooh, Carson Smith is an extreme ground baller. He could slot nicely into our bullpen. All right, I would like to give you a front-loaded, quote-unquote front-loaded, contract worth $50,000 less than you proposed. Is this guy worth signing to a minor league? Yes, he is worth signing to a minor league contract. Affordable, actually completely free talent that we're adding here. These guys are definitely better than some of the prospects that we've got. Gahara. Don't like that he's unmotivated, but he's a minor league potential add. I guess he's worth offering a contract to. I mean, at worst, these guys are potential trade options later on. Is Russell Martin a good defender? No, not really. He's all right. Kind of surprised that there are players this good available as minor league free agent signing options.
Oh, we could have probably assigned Puig to be our DH. But then again, why would we? And how is he so expensive? He's not even good. Jose Vicente, nope. There are definitely some interesting players that we could potentially be picking up if they sign these minor league contracts. Oh, maybe we should sign Wei Yin Chen just because he's popular. He's extremely popular. You know, worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario, we pay him a million dollars for one year and make the fans happy. And uh, making the fans happy is important, even though we are on an extremely tight budget no matter what we do. How popular is Stephen Wright? Oh, he's a knuckleballer? That's funny. wonder how he does as a reliever. Let's see. I guess he's I'll give you a major league contract for a million dollars and hope that you can increase my popularity a bit and you can be a reliever okay well um, you know what this is running so long that I guess we'll just do the uh, prepping the team here and I'll actually do the season and such on the next episode but as you can see uh, working with really not great players is not a whole bunch of ease, and hopefully we can pull out a not terrible team, because this team is going to suck. But in a couple years, after some of our players develop a bit, maybe we can start to see a productive team running out there. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys on the next one, where we'll actually start to play games and see how this team does.